First, I like to use reclaimed scraps to make my slip. This is a two gallon bucket, which is about 75% full of dry scraps, to which I then added enough water to cover the scraps by about two inches or so. And then I let it sit or slake overnight before mixing. I find it much easier to make the slip from my existing clay if it's bone dry first. Moist clay doesn't like to take on more water as easily as bone dry clay. Dry clay will disintegrate when you add water to it, making the process much easier. If I were smart, I would have weighed my dry clay first and then measured exactly how much water I used in order to make it easier the next time I do this. This would take a lot of guesswork out of the equation. Then with a the drill, mix your slip thoroughly. This will take a good long time, five to 15 minutes. In hindsight, at this stage of the process, I ended up adding too much water because it's really difficult to mix your slip when it's thick. You're aiming for your slip to be the consistency of sour cream or frosting. Regardless, I ran out of room to thoroughly mix it in my two gallon bucket, so I had to pour it in a five gallon bucket. Once I thoroughly mixed it, it still would have fit into my two gallon bucket and it would have been nice and full, but I divided it in half so that I would have an extra bucket of slip to experiment with and do various demonstrations. That being said, if this is the first time, it would also be a good idea for you to set aside a generous amount of this slip in case you make mistakes. This reserve batch of untouched slip could also come in handy for you to make adjustments as you calibrate your slip. And if you nailed it the first time and didn't need the extra slip, now you have some extra joinery slip. The one thing you do not want to do is add too much water like I did. It's a super easy mistake to make because it's so difficult to mix your slip so thickly. When you start the deflocculation process, it's better to have too little water than too much water. I ended up adding too much water to begin with, which I had to fix. So I will walk you through that process. How do I know I added too much water? Because of this next step, measuring the specific gravity. Okay, once you've mixed your slip, you will need to measure the gravity. And so you can either do this with a scale or a hydrometer. I measured it both ways so that you can too. Measuring your gravity is the single most important step. So again, specific gravity will tell you how much water you have in your mix, whether you have enough or not enough. It's the ratio of water to clay or if you rather, it's the density of your slip relative to water. So you can pick yourself up a hydrometer from anywhere from 15 to $40. I'll link below with some pros and cons so you can choose for yourself. One side of the hydrometer measures specific gravity and the other side uh, measures the Bome. Um, we will be working with the specific gravity. So water has a gravity of 1.0, so water is very light. And so when you get your own hydrometer, you can test it on water to see how accurate it is. And this here, um, 1.7 to 1.8, this is the op optimal gravity for your casting slip. So this is really what we're aiming for here. And so um, when you think about this, you think about this hydrometer right here is going, you're gonna drop it into a bucket of slip. Um, and so if your slip, is light if your slip has low gravity if there are not a lot of clay particles um, it's going to sink really low into your bucket and so for example if you think about water when you measure water that's water right there it sinks really low into the bucket so it's super light and so um, this here is the low end of the spectrum right here so this is low gravity and then as you get here this is high gravity and so that you think about this is gonna have a whole lot of clay particles. And so when you add your hydrometer to your bucket of slip, it's not gonna go in very far because there are a lot of clay particles that are holding it up. Here it is in action. It can be tricky to measure your gravity with a hydrometer when your slip is thick. The only reason I'm pouring slip into a graduated cylinder is because I need the slip to be in a deep enough container for the hydrometer to sink into. I'm not using the graduated cylinder itself to measure anything. You definitely need to lubricate the hydrometer with water so that it can slide in accurately measuring the gravity. I also needed to tap on the graduated cylinder a lot to get it to settle into its proper placement. You need to tap it until it stops moving. 
Remember, you are aiming for a specific gravity between 1.7 to 1.8. You will see my specific gravity is 1.7, the lighter end of the target range. Some slips work better on the light side and some work better on the high side. The only way to know is to experiment. At this point, because slip can be thick, it is often difficult to get an accurate measurement with a hydrometer. Even though my specific gravity seems to be in range, this first measurement may not be all that accurate. Now I'll show you the other way to measure your gravity, although this too can be a bit tricky. I'm just using a scale and a measuring cup from my kitchen. All you do is fill the measuring cup with 100 milliliters of slip and then weigh it in grams. What makes this process of measuring 100 milliliters tricky is due to the fact that my slip is thick. But bear in mind, my slip is actually on the thin side. But even still, you can see the slip does not flatten out like water does. It does not seek its own level. So you just do the best you can. This here is actually closer to the consistency of your slip that you're looking for when you're just starting out. I have found this process easier to be more accurate if you have a taller and thinner measuring cup. But for me, this is good enough. If you are going to do this often, it is worth investing in a better measuring cup or a syringe. But we're not done yet. You need to do some simple math to find the specific gravity with a scale. Measuring your specific gravity with a scale is super easy. Don't let the slide scare you. So my scale said that 100 milliliters of slip weighed 151 grams. And I know that 100 milliliters of water weighs 100 grams. And so all you do is you divide 151 by 100 and it gives you 1.51. Or if you're super smart, all you do is you move your decimal over and you get 1.51. So through this process, I found it to be difficult to measure accurately with a measuring cup because it is difficult to tell where the bottom of, of the meniscus is. For example, my measuring cup said I had 100 milliliters of water and my scale told me that it weighed 97 grams. And in reality, it should weigh 100 grams. Regardless, my scale says that I'm right here and my hydrometer says that I am here. Despite the challenges of getting an accurate measurement from my scale, at this point, I trust the measurement from my scale more because my slip really is too thick to get an accurate measurement from the hydrometer. So I know I have too much water and not enough clay. I can fix this one of two ways. I can add dry clay to make my gravity heavier, or I can let water evaporate to make my slip heavier. I ended up letting water evaporate. As I've already pointed out, my slip is too watery and is more like the consistency of yogurt rather than the desired consistency of frosting. But before walking away for the day and letting water evaporate from my slip, I decided to add a small amount of sodium silicate to deflocculate it. You can dial in your specific gravity first, then work with your deflocculants later, or you can start adding them now, working on both at the same time. Regardless, be sure to take it slow with deflocculant, only to add a little at a time so that you do not over deflocculate it. I'm doing a half teaspoon at a time. When you are initially adding deflocculants to your mix, you will find the slip responds quickly. It's super exciting and magical, but they truly take about a day to fully activate. This is what can be tricky about deflocculants. For example, if you try to get your deflocculant proportion perfect all at once, you are likely to accidentally over deflocculate because they are not as instant as they seem. Unfortunately, over deflocculation can be a frustrating problem to fix. If it is slightly over deflocculated, it is much easier to fix. FYI, technically speaking, when deflocculating, you should mix your slip for a long time, like 12 hours or more, in order for it to properly stabilize and for its flow properties to take full effect. I never do this when mixing my own casting slip. I don't have the equipment for it and the equipment is expensive. Plus, it's not that important to me since I am making sculpture and not precision slip cast dinnerware. There are two advantages to adding my deflocculant now. For one, it will make my slip more runny, making it easier to measure the gravity of the slip, either with a hydrometer or a scale. Secondly, this gives the deflocculant more time to fully activate. However, there is one drawback to adding the deflocculant now. This is because I am allowing water to evaporate from my slip in order to thicken it. As you will recall, deflocculants are water soluble and some of the deflocculant will evaporate with water. Therefore, it will make this process a little more challenging to precisely duplicate right away. This might be a big enough reason for you to dial in your specific gravity first. 
I opted for adding deflaculant now. I first added a half teaspoon and then thoroughly mixed the slip for, I don't know, maybe three minutes and it still seemed too thick. So I added another half teaspoon, mixed it thoroughly and it was very runny, probably too runny, but I'm not worried because I know my specific gravity is low or light. Remember, deflaculants do not affect the specific gravity. They affect the flow or what is referred to as viscosity, which I will come back to. Now that I've deflaculated the slip, it's much easier to measure the specific gravity, both with a hydrometer and with a scale. Since the deflaculant thins the slip and makes it flow, the hydrometer slides into its proper place more readily. So when I remeasured with a hydrometer, it gave me a value of 1.5. When measuring with a scale, it is now easier to find the bottom of the meniscus, and it measured 1.4. The different numbers recorded with a scale have more to do with human error and how difficult it is to pour in the same volume of slip every time. The results this time are much closer together than they originally were. You can see why my preferred method of measuring specific gravity is with a hydrometer, but only after it is deflaculated. I let my slip sit for five days to evaporate before checking back in on it. A lot of water has evaporated and after mixing it, it looks pretty decent although it seems a little on the thick side. For example, it would not pour very well. The specific gravity measured at 1.7 with my hydrometer, which meant the gravity was a little on the light side of the target range. This is more evidence that my hydrometer initially was on the light side. So since my gravity is light or low, you would expect my slip to be more runny, but since it's not very runny, it means that I need to add deflaculant to make it flow better. This is why it is so important to measure your gravity. It will tell you to thin your slip with either water or deflaculant. Water will make your gravity lighter, but deflaculant will thin your slip and allow it to pour more easily without affecting the specific gravity. At this point, I do not want my gravity to be lighter, but you won't know until you measure your gravity. I keep talking about making my slip in terms of runny or thick. The term I really should be using is viscosity. Viscosity is the degree of fluidity. A viscous slip is thick and lacks fluidity. Both maple syrup and honey have high viscosity and water has very low viscosity. Our slip that we're making needs to be thin enough to pour easily out of molds, so we do not want a slip with high viscosity. This is important to distinguish because I was just referring to my slip as too thick, even though the specific gravity was on the low or the light side. Really what I should be saying is that my slip currently has too high of viscosity. I need to lower the viscosity and the only way to lower the viscosity without changing the gravity is to add deflaculant. The deflaculant will decrease my viscosity, making it flow and pour more easily, making it seem more thin than it really is. So I added a half teaspoon of deflaculant since my one gallon of slip was too viscous. Then I thoroughly mixed it and it seemed pretty decent. But I still wanted my gravity to be higher or heavier. So I left it uncovered for a few more days for water to evaporate. Again, deflaculant affects the viscosity and not the gravity. Water, on the other hand, will affect the specific gravity and it will also affect the viscosity causing slip to flow. In the end, after about two weeks, I slowly adjusted my deflaculant, adding one half to one teaspoon a day, making sure to let it rest overnight, giving the deflaculant time to fully activate. But here are the important signs you need to watch for when you're making your slip. Once you add the deflaculant to your slip, it becomes non-Newtonian, meaning it does not follow the laws of physics. The slip sometimes acts like a liquid and sometimes like a pudding or jello-like solid. This gel-like state is called thixotropic. Notice that when I drag my fingers in the slip, it forms an indentation. And as I begin to gently mix it, it turns more liquidy. I am no longer able to form indentations with my fingers. As you see, mixing it makes it very runny, low viscosity. And when you let it rest for a while, it becomes more like pudding or jello until you stir it again. It quickly turns from low viscosity to high viscosity without adding anything to the mix. This action of stirring alone changes the slip from high viscosity, a thick gel-like state, to low viscosity, which is more fluid. It is non-Newtonian. It vacillates between being more like a liquid and more like a solid. Thixotropic is the tendency to thicken when not disturbed. 
The slip stays in suspension because the clay particles continuously repel and bounce off each other, staying in suspension. This is a super important stage to recognize. When you first begin to add your deflocculant, your slip will be under deflocculated and thixotropic. You will notice that the minute you mix it, it will be very fluid and then it will quickly gel or, or coagulate, maybe after a couple minutes. This only happens because you have deflocculated your slip and the clay particles are repelling from each other and are somewhat frozen in suspension. The deflocculant is preventing them from settling. Another telltale sign that your clay is thixotropic and under deflocculated is that after only about five minutes or so, it won't pour out of the container you just put it in. You do want your slip to become thixotropic to gel, but not this quickly. The problem with it being under deflocculated is that it becomes thixotropic too quickly and it won't pour out of the mold that you are using. As you just saw, you can literally turn it upside down and the slip won't come out. When you are deflocculating your slip, you want this thixotropic action to happen after about one half to one hour. This way, it gives you plenty of time to pour the slip back out of the mold before this thixotropic action happens. The telltale sign of over deflocculation will result in a skin on the top of your slip almost immediately after mixing. If the skin is super thin, it might be that your slip is not fully processed and it actually is not over deflocculated. If your slip develops a thick skin when you leave it for about an hour or so, it is most likely over deflocculated. Either case, wait a day for your deflocculant to fully process before you even try to fix it. You may find if you wait a day, the slip is fine. Just be sure to mix it again very thoroughly before letting it sit overnight. It's super easy to over deflocculate, and this is a very common problem to have. If the specific gravity is in a good range and your slip is too runny, it's over deflocculated. The good news is that your water content is correct. The bad news is that you can't really remove the deflocculant. You will have to add more unadulterated slip to the mixture to counter the over deflocculation. If you did not save some virgin slip at the beginning of this process to correct this mistake, you will have to add clay, wet or dry, to the mixture. This means that you will need to readjust your water content. This is why it's a good idea to set aside a bit of the slip at the very beginning of this process so you can more easily fix this problem. Remember, it takes about a day for the deflocculant to fully activate, so don't try to completely fix this problem all in one day. And be sure to take lots of notes so that you will speed up your process next time. When you deflocculate your slip, there are a few things you are looking for. First, you are looking for a good webbing action between your fingers. Second, you are looking to see how quickly you can see the hairs on your fingers through the slip or the skin of your knuckles exposed, usually about five to 10 seconds. Third, you're looking to see how much slip is left on your hand when you squeeze and make a fist. You do not want too much slip to squeeze out of your fist because it would mean that your slip is too thick or too viscous. And fourth, you are looking for a very smooth stream of slip as you pour it. In conclusion, this process for deflocculating my slip took me a couple of weeks as I allowed water to evaporate to adjust my specific gravity simultaneously while slowly increasing the deflocculant. Remember, I started with two buckets of slip, each containing about one gallon. This way, I had an extra gallon of slip for experiments and corrections. Eventually, I combined nearly all of the contents of both buckets. I ended up with less than one gallon of slip, and I used four and one half teaspoons of sodium silicate as a deflocculant. This tells you that when I started this process, I added way too much water to begin with. So the next time I try to make a similar amount, if I get the gravity dialed in first, I will make sure not to add as much sodium silicate since I know that a good portion of it evaporated with the water. If you're curious, here's my clay body recipe. It does not deflocculate the best due to the high ball clay content and low talc, but it actually is fairly decent. For more information about me and my work, please visit my website.